Hi, Fern. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. <laughs> uh, it's not squeaky crazy today. Oh. No, you sound, you don't sound like Peter Rabbit or... <laughs> <laughs> you sound like yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, I finally read some directions. <laughs> Why, was it your computer or what? Oh, it was, it's, I think it's the, uh, it's, uh, Oh, whatever it is, uh, this, the, the auxiliary camera and uh, oh. speaker. So I just, I'm using a computer and it, that's worked great, still working great. Yeah, so that's what I do as a computer. So how do I get a picture? Huh? You don't have a picture? No, no, am I on your screen? No, I, I don't have you on the picture. I have just Peter and Ruth. It's a uh, huh. start video. Maybe that'll help there. So you should have the slideshow of the announcements running right now. I do. And once, once the, while I'm sharing my screen, you can't see anything, but what I'm showing you. Actually, so yeah, I see, Fern, I see Fern and me and you. Oh, okay. So then you've probably figured out how to do gallery view anyway, and that's oh. good. Yeah, the peanut gallery is me. That's, yeah. that's right. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get a few more things ready lot. before church. So a quick 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 question, Stephanie. Uh -huh. Every every week or two, there's a uh, letter to the editor in the Chronicle by somebody named Jeff Johnson. Is that our boy? Do you know? Um, I have no idea. It, it, okay. it quite possibly would be um, Pastor Jeff from, yes. from the chapel at Berkeley, but um, not necessarily because there are oh. lots of Johnsons. There sure are. As, it sounds, as, yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the quality is his kind, of, his kind of writing. It's pretty good. I, uh, well, and I would, I would um, check on expect him to write very well. Yes. Yeah. And I do know that he is, that advocacy is one of, one of his gifts and one of the things he spends a lot of his time on. I will follow up on that. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. So, are you live, Fern? I guess I'm alive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I think that uh, the Chronicle, I think the Chronicle has been printing letters from Lutherans, much probably unknown, to, unknown be known to them. That's with, unusual. It, 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 hmm, what? Isn't that unusual that the Lutherans are getting that much coverage now? It feels like it to me. They, they've got, uh, what I, what I think seen, it's good. I think it's good because now people can see that we aren't all crazy Christians. Some oh. of us are, you know, no, thoughtful I and I think it's thought provoking. Funny. Right. They uh they don't they don't say Pastor Jeff Johnson and, and today there's one by uh a Ron Mo Labeda from uh, Saint he's the pastor of Saint Mark. Oh I, yeah, I'm familiar yeah. with them. He's he has one um he's outraged at some stuff. Um or no, he's not, but it's just a good letter. So maybe I'll just point this out. Hi, Ron. Huh? Good morning. Where are you? I'm at the uh, lodge. <laughs> Where? At the lodge. At the lodge. Oh, at the okay. lodge. Are you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And here's Betty. Yeah. Taking a vacation. <laughs> Pete. Pete's there. Yeah. I'm here. Oh, yeah. the top of your head is there anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll have to straighten this out. You, yeah, adjust the camera, not your head, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that needs some adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Well, 
Oh, seminar. Did anybody go to um, the funeral yesterday? Not I. I, Not I knew I. her, but, but I've got so many things with my family that are serious that I can cry just like that. So I didn't want to go. And, uh, uh, uh. I mean, that just would have been an extra thing for me to tolerate. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to say, I didn't know her. Oh, good morning, Fern. Her? Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Good morning. Who said that? Ah, oh. Mary Kay. Uh, the Wences. Hi, yes. Wences. Hi there, Peter. And How are you guys? Uh, we're good. We're good. How about you? Good. Thank you. We're good. We're getting. We're getting into the panic stages. We're gonna go on our trip to Holden in less than two weeks. And oh, oh, good. So we're, huh. and I'm looking at the weather on the way up, and I think I'll get fried. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Do they have air, air conditioned cabins? <laughs> they don't. It's it's like the Bay Area. They don't. They don't need them. They're at three or four thousand feet, uh, and they usually yeah. don't need them. Uh, usually, uh, but they don't have them. Oh, this we're is much. Not. We're much more used to having the heat on up there. In the summer, in uh, it's, it's north central Washington State, you know. Uh huh. We've had uh, snow on the Fourth of July in the past. Oh. So it can can be pretty interesting. Oh. Also had snow on Christmas Eve up there one time. It went <laughs> oh, up there, wow. Or Christmas oh. holiday, and it was great. Yeah. Or Easter, I mean Easter. Oh, did anyone tune in to the uh, Barbara Lewis uh, memorial yesterday? Not me. I I tried, but I didn't I didn't get it. I, you know. Well, it's uh. Do you do Facebook, Fern, or do you well, go to I, our web? I use the computer, so yeah. You I'm actually don't that. have to have a, a Facebook um, account to watch it, but if you go to Trinity's website. I'm going to be announcing this in a second. Oh, okay. If you go to Trinity's website, there's a new tab that says live video on huh. our homepage. And you click on that, it will take you to our Facebook page and you can view it there. Oh. The Facebook. sound quality yesterday wasn't very good, but I have identified a couple of problems that I think will be fixed by Thursday. Good, good. Okay. Sorry, I just killed that conversation. I didn't mean to do that. That's oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, good. I'm no, I'm glad. I'm glad because I, for some reason, I thought it could only be on Facebook. So that's great to know. Well, to go to the it, well, it is only on Facebook, but you don't have to have a Facebook account to watch it. Oh, okay. Got you. Yep. Good morning, Pete. Good morning. How's Joanne. everybody? Hi, Joanne. You're Good. In a Anne's uh, back in Philadelphia. Oh. oh. So oh. she won't be with us today. So she's back there with a re it's a been a re reunion of her family. No oh, how nice. How oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so. OK. So, so she is. She's not going to tune in from back there. Huh? I don't think so. Uh, family, family not interested. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She so much is going on back there. I guess she just ha has to go with the flow. Her daughter, <laughs> her daughter plans everything, so she just goes along with the all right, whatever is mapped out for her. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Is everybody turning in their money for luminaries for our American Cancer Society's event coming up quickly? We need to get your names in so we can put them on the bags. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> Relay for Life is the 24th from 6 o'clock oh. 
to 10 o'clock, only four hours in the evening. You're all oh, welcome. Fine. Is it live? Live, you can walk around the track. <laughs> or, you, or you can watch it uh, online if you like also. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've walked that many years. Many <laughs> times, yes. <laughs> yes, we have a great team. Go, go, go. Uh, You're all welcomed. Oh, two weeks. Yep, two weeks. Okay. Oh, did hmm. did everybody know that uh, what I just found out is that Star is out of town, but she's continuing to do all of her music things for, for church. Oh, I thought that I had mentioned that. I hadn't mentioned that. Oh, I don't. I'm, I didn't. It didn't get to me. That's all. She's she's been there really since the beginning of June, and she won't ah, be back. Whoa. She won't be back until. Um, July 20th. She's helping her grandkids get reacclimated to being ready for for school and such. In fact, here she is. Hi, Star. <laughs> Star, hi. Good timing. Hi. Yeah, welcome. Oh, welcome. Oh, geez. Oh, oh what did we do? We can still see you, Joanne. I know, but I can't see anything, so I have to start all over again. <laughs> oh, no. You can't see the slideshow? I can't see anything. Oh, dear. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, there I am. As I, I'm back. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> you accidentally open something else and a different window becomes active and you lose yourself. <laughs> I didn't do anything. That's the weird stuff. <laughs> Turn off the Isn't that nice that the uh, hot weather went by us today? Pass us by. <laughs> Pass us by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't like it too much. No. Here's a picture of this. Well, we were in Brentwood this week and it was like 100, and I mean, you couldn't go outside during the day. You had yeah. to stay inside. It just yeah, was... we were in um, Danville at my daughter's and oh my god we went of course they got air conditioning we went outside you can hardly breathe it was 102 uh, yesterday uh, phooey well I was in Castro Valley yesterday and it was hot but it wasn't that hot I don't think yeah. <laughs> yeah. thank goodness that's why my granddaughter it's her birthday today Morgan's birthday and they're coming into town because oh. it's going to be like 115 at their place. Yeah. So uh. They're coming to Alameda to celebrate yeah. here. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> that sounds like my brother who lives in Arizona. It's about that, about 118 down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. According to the rec um, information yesterday, it was 130 in Death Valley. Yeah. Oh, God. that's ridiculous. Oh. I still have I still have the T-shirt that I bought in 1991 when Phoenix hit 123 degrees for the first time. Oh, it was the first time in recorded history that it hit 123. And um, it's it's matched that a couple of times now. And it's oh, my gosh, you were I, there. Oh, I was there and I have the shirt to, to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> it was, um, it was a blast furnace day yeah. and, and our, the swim team I swam on every year had a day that we would go to the water park and that was the day. So it was, it was so hot that even being in the water wasn't refreshing. It was unbelievable. Uh. Well, stars there. Star, how how are you doing in Phoenix? 
temperature wise <laughs> and otherwise. <laughs> well, you're muted. We can't hear you. Okay. Um, we went swimming yesterday and the water was warmer than my shower had been in the morning. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the pool just sits there and absorbs all the heat and it's yeah. warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be about 110 this afternoon, I think. <gasps> that's, that's typical. Yeah. Has the humidity hit yet? No, it's been pretty low humidity. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yesterday, yesterday for the funeral, I was drenched, but that's because oh. this, this desert girl, whenever there's about 7% humidity, I start to sweat. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm good until I'm, I'm good at 6%, but 7% gets me. <laughs> Besides you had your robe on, that's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was a lot. Okay, I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the slides run through one more time so everyone can see them, and then I'm gonna um, switch us over to live stream. Actually, no, because I'm gonna give my announcement, so I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> switch us over now, and you can all see. Welcome to Maryland. Thank you. Last week. Yep. Oh. Morning, everybody. Good morning. 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 Who said that? Me. <laughs> Karen. Yeah, hi, Karen. Hi. How are you, Pete? Hi. Pete. hi. Great. How are you, Peter? Hey, okay. Yeah, Pete and Peter up there. All right. Up there, yeah. Pete and Peter. How are you, Fern? I'm doing well, thanks. Good. Have to get a better view here. Jeff and Anita, or are we go. It tells. Okay, good, good. Okay. Don't Kathleen don't... and Christine, condolences to you on your loss. We're mm -hmm. praying for you. You might be muted. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mary Kay. Thanks. You're welcome. Good morning, Star. Good morning. How are you doing? Fine. Good. 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 Hi, Kathy. <laughs> it was wonderful to be in the sanctuary yesterday. I can't wait till we're all back there together. Uh, yeah. It's a. Uh, it was both a little eerie and very comforting. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Good morning and welcome to worship. We're glad that you're here today. Um, and as we get started, I'm just going to have a few announcements for us all. Um, I've just muted everyone. So if you're one of our worship servers today, please don't forget to unmute yourself uh, when it's time for you to, to do your piece of the service. Um, and we are, we are recording right now. Uh, that's just something that's important for me to let people know. This week, um, we have a few different announcements. Um, first of all, we uh, have the Relay for Life coming up that Joanne and uh, her team are preparing for. You can make um, a $10 donation for a Luminaria or as many $10 donations for as many Luminarias as you wish to dedicate. Um, by, by uh, letting either the church office know uh, with, with the written name in honor of and dedication to um, and your, your check uh, written to the American Cancer Society. 
or you can get those directly to Joanne Robinson. Um, we need to have those by July 16th to make sure that they have time to make their contributions and, and their luminarias. But uh, if, you, if you want to get those in, we are excited to be participating in that activity. Uh, yesterday, we held a funeral for Barbara Lewis. She passed away in May, on May 15th. She had been a longtime member of Trinity and had retired to the to Acacia Creek Retirement Center at the Masonic Lodge complex in Union City about 10 years ago. And so um, there, are, there are some people here who wouldn't know her, but, but many who do. She was very active in the seniors program and the choir. Um, she, we, we had a very limited number of people in the sanctuary. There were only 14 of us in the sanctuary, uh, both because of COVID protocol, since we aren't worshiping in person right now, and also because we're still um, not using the gate off of Morton while we're getting the new gate designed and installed. So um, it was a limited in-person service, but you can view that service by going to Trinity's webpage, www.trinityalameda.org. And on that homepage, we now have a button that says live video in the upper right hand corner of the page. And when you click on that link, it will take you to Trinity's Facebook page. If you don't have a Facebook account, you can still view the video. You can still look at the page. It's a public page. So um, that's available to anyone, regardless of whether or not you have a Facebook account. And uh, you're encouraged to go ahead and watch that service. Um, and in the comments, I've posted a slideshow that had been um, put together by Barbara's grandson, Ryan. So um, you can view that as well. Um, the sound quality taught me something yesterday, both about our equipment and about how to use it better. So I apologize for the sound on this first funeral, but it will be improved this week. And that leads me to another announcement. Um, one, of our, one of our congregation brothers, uh, Dennis Lane, passed away on uh, July 4th, late in the evening. Um, his funeral service will be this coming Thursday at 10 a.m. We, we are going to be in person for a small gathering of people and we will be live streaming uh, just like we did yesterday. There is room for you if you would like to be at this funeral. I just ask that for members of Trinity you let me know in advance that you'll be coming in person so that I can prepare um, appropriately for, for spacing and for a number of bulletins that are printed. Otherwise, um, there will be, the bulletin will be available on our website and you'll be able to view in person or you'll be able to view live um, the way I just described from our website. Um, let us take a moment to remember our brother, Dennis. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for our brother, Dennis for giving him to us to know and to love while he was here on his earthly pilgrimage. We pray that you will comfort those who mourn, that you will help us to remember Dennis in our hearts and in our prayers. We pray, God, that you will comfort his wife and his daughter and his brother in this difficult time. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Loving God. You have offered us the world and yet we turn to our own distractions, believing we know better. We have not lived as your beloved children, born of one spirit and belonging to one family. Instead, we cut ourselves off from what is unfamiliar intimidating or different. Forgive us for our limited vision. Forgive us for not trusting in you and your promises to never get up on us, amen. We have been adopted into God's family, an identity which cannot be taken from us. God is love, God is patient, God is merciful. We owe eternal thanks to the lover of our souls for continually reaching for us and holding us fast in an embrace of forgiveness. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray, God of Spirit, we are yours because you have said we are. Guide us to live as full inheritors of your grace and joyful proclaimers of your promise to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do we happen to have August or Grayson and Calvin with us here today? Here we go. Hi there. It's good to see you today. Hi. Do you have, I, I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you this question anyway. Do you happen to have a special stuffed animal that if it ever got lost, you would be really, really upset about it. Kitty. Kitty, I know, yeah, see? And, and is there any way that people would know how to get it back to you if you lost Kitty? I mean, is there any way? Yeah. No, oh no. Well, I'll tell you that my puppy, my real live puppy, if anything ever happened to Honey, I would be so, so sad. So I make sure that Honey wears collar. And, and do you know what's on here? to make sure that if anything ever, ever happened to Honey, that, that I got her back. Do you know what's here? It doesn't just have her name on it. It has my name on it and my phone number on it. It's her dog tag. It's her collar, right? So that whoever finds her knows that there's someone who loves her a lot and would be really sad if she didn't see her again. Today, we're going to hear about how Jesus and God love us so, 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 so much that they write their, their name on our hearts and they make sure that we know that we're part of their family and that nothing we ever do would ever change that we are part of their family. We are God's sons and daughters because God loves us that much and that makes us Jesus's brother and sister because that's how much Jesus loves us do you have any brothers and sisters at home but you know what at church you have lots of them you have lots of brothers and sisters at church because we're all God's children. And that's exciting, right? You don't ever have to be worried about being alone. <laughs> you go ahead and enjoy that breakfast and we'll talk again soon. Have a good Sunday. Bye bye. Today, we begin a new series in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Our reading today is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will 
to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory in him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and had believed him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you, all, remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My aunt has this funny way of... Um, telling us that she's different than the rest of the family. Anytime we're together and she's embarrassed by me or my mom or my uncle or anyone else she's related to and realizes that she has nothing in common, she rolls her eyes and says, see, I told you, I'm adopted. <laughs> Which isn't really the case. I mean, she looks so much like my grandmother. There's no way she was adopted. <laughs> And now that I live close to her and I spend time with her, I recognize just how much she has in common with my mom and my uncle. So try as she might, we're her dorks. One second. We're gonna see if a treat might help quiet things down at my house. And yet at the same time, I remember when I was growing up, it seemed like the big drama on family television that could happen to put a twist in, in a storyline was for one of the children to find out that they were adopted. And I always wondered why that would be something that would be bad because Adoption is a beautiful, beautiful statement about how wanted and cherished and loved a person is. We read in the Bible that we are not simply people that Jesus calls friends. And we are not simply people that God has created. We have been adopted into the family of God. We have been brought in, not simply as acquaintances or people who share space here on earth, but as family. And while family is complicated, and family has lots of different 
images of what love looks like. One thing we can count on in this family is that we will not be left alone. We will not be forsaken. We will not be abandoned. Instead, God looked at each and every one of us upon our creation and cherished us so much, God couldn't let us go. I've had on many occasions been asked if I would be a foster parent, a foster mom for dogs because I love them so much because they are part of my family. They have more right to my furniture than I do most of the time. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. And so people think, Stephanie, this is what you should do. You have a heart, a passion, a capacity. And I said, no, I don't because I couldn't let them go. I would adopt every single one of them just to make sure that I never had to give them up. I fall too deeply in love. It would be too hard. Have you ever had a moment like that where you decided, oh, I'll pick up this kitten just to say hello or just because they're cute or just because I happen to be at PetSmart and there's an adoption uh, program going on today. I'll just say hello. And you walk out with a kitten. Or maybe you decide that you'll just try on this dress. It's, it, you don't know when you would wear it and it's probably money you don't need to spend. You just want to see what it looks like when it's on you. And you fall in love with it and it follows you home. The thing about adoption is that it doesn't come out of obligation. It doesn't come because one must. It doesn't come because of an accident. God chose you. God chose you because God looked at you and God was crazy about you. God couldn't let you go. We believe that that's what it means to be one of God's children. But there are legal implications for adoption as well. And, and one of those implications is that now that which is the family's is also yours. In Paul's writing, he speaks a lot about inheritance. What does it mean for us to be brothers and sisters of Christ who inherit that which Christ himself inherits? What does it mean for there to be a son and what does it mean for us to have been adopted as sons and daughters? Well, it means that which is God's is ours. That which becomes Christ's becomes ours. That is all of creation that belongs fully to God is also ours to live in, to care for. You know, chores. I'm sure most of you had chores growing up and certainly as, a, as adults, we all have chores. We just don't think of them that way. Instead, we think of them as being an adult. But, you know, those things that you were responsible for making sure happened, whether it was feeding the pet or taking out the trash or in our family, Saturdays we cleaned and mom and dad would do the yard work outside and my sister and I would do the cleaning inside and my sister and I divvied up the jobs. She dusted and sometimes did windows and I vacuumed and did the bathrooms. 
I did the bathrooms. Yeah, it was not one of my favorite tasks, but I always knew that the bathroom was clean and there was something to that. Because being a part of a family meant that the whole family needed to pitch in to make our house a home, to make it a place that we could live in, to make it a place that we were proud of, to make sure we were taking care of the things that were ours. And being a part of God's family is no different. They come with rights and responsibilities. And we also know that if Christ's inheritance is the new heaven and the new earth, eternal life in heaven with Christ and God in the throne room, then we also know that that inheritance is ours as well. We need not fear our day-to-day -day life. We need not fear that which is to come because we have been guaranteed our place at God's table. Oh, and what a table that is. You know, when we get back into the liturgy and we're singing the full liturgy when we're back in person, whenever we get to sing the full liturgy, there's that part of the service where we sing, this is the feast of victory for our God, right? It's not just that we're singing about God's victory. We're also singing about sitting at God's banquet table. My family, I don't know if your family is this way, but my family growing up, we all had our own place at the table to sit. And it was primarily dad set at the head of the table. And my sister still needed my mom to help her cut her food. So it went mom and then dad, and then my sister next to my mom. And then I got to sit on my own across from my dad. But we all had a spot at that table. And when I went off to college in Seattle, you know, we sat with our friends, wherever our friends decided to sit. And some of our friends wanted to sit at the same table every single meal. And then other friends liked to go to a different table for every meal. They wanted to be at a different table. They were very intentional about it. And whoever you wanted to sit with at that moment, you went to where they were. And I remember sometimes we would go into the lunch room or the dinner room and depending on how many people were still in the dining hall at that time, we had tables of eight, right? We'd get 16 people around that table with like one hand getting at their dinner because none of us wanted to be left out. There was always room for another, no matter how small the table started to feel, there was always room for another chair. And that's the way God's table is. There is always room for another person because God wants to make sure we are all there around that table, sharing the family meal. That's what it looks like to be family. That's what it looks like to be with the family we have chosen, the family that has chosen us. Not the family we happen into by accident, the family that has been chosen. God's family. We can be assured of our love we can be assured that we are cherished because God has chosen us. God has written name, his name upon our hearts and has said, you are mine forever. I never want to be apart from you. Come, live with me. Live under my love, and I will care for you. Amen.
confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world and all those in need. Precious Lord, in you we have an inheritance, a family, an identity, and a future. May the world know you through us, and may we live to the praise of your glory. Loving God, hear our prayer. You promise to gather up all things to yourself, loving creator, everything on earth and in heaven. May we see fit to love the world, others, and ourselves with the kind of extravagance you have shown to us. Loving God, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all adoptive parents and families who model themselves on your compassionate example. Bless their children as they come to know more fully the grace that chose them. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for those suffering lasting effects from the virus, and for medical workers. We pray especially for the people in countries and regions with limited access to vaccines. We pray for those enduring famine and hunger and those for those experiencing homelessness. We pray for all who are ill, for all who receive no medical care. 
Heal them with your loving might. Loving God, hear our prayer. We are marked with the seal of your promised Holy Spirit. And we come to you with all our frailties and infirmities. Wrap all those who suffer in your healing embrace, especially the family of Dennis Lane, Carmen Smith, Marilyn, Michael Westcott, Eric Abramson, Michael Rasmussen, Larry Haskins, Carol Emerson, Constance Farber, Yim Mui, Adrian McDonald, Sophia Loera, Hilke de Arce, Jackson Bohm, Mary Clevenger, Don Ledoux, Buddy and Sherry Scott, Kelly Wentz, Nancy Stitch, Patricia Runo, Evelyn Berger, Gail Cromack, Kate Ganshaw, Don Grosskreutz, Jeff Klein, Michael Lamb, Maddie Pierce, Willie Pruitt, Michael Lamb, whoops, Christine Weinberg, Winberg, and Dorothy Wingeyer. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for the ministries of your word, for Trinity Church Council, the priesthood of all believers, Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Oakland, the Lutheran Church of Kajatumba in Rwanda, the Lutheran Ministry to Nursing Homes, and the East Bay Lutheran Youth Program. And we pray for the fullness of the lives of Grace and Motor and Marty Grosskreutz as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Loving God, hear our prayer. Gather us together with all your saints, Lord, in the fullness of time that we might share with them your promised redemption and perfect union with our heavenly family. Loving God, hear our prayer. At this time, you're invited to pray the prayers of your heart, either silently or loud. And if you wish to share them, please take off your mute, share them. Loving Lord, I ask your healing hand upon our neighbor, Ron. I ask you to continue to heal his body <clears throat> from all the injuries received by hitting, being hit on his bicycle. Lord, he is a, a wonderful person. I ask that you show him your love and guidance through this difficult time as he recovers. Loving God. Hear our prayer. Our prayer. Lord, we ask you be with all of those suffering from intense heat in, in their climates around them and the firefighters fighting the fires. May they know your protection and your strength and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray also, God, for those who have been caught in um, extreme, extreme rain, extreme water, extreme wind. We pray, God, that you, that you keep those people safe as well. You, God, are great and your uh, weather is mighty. Nature is mighty. And we pray, God, that you will keep us from harm. We pray uh, as well for Jen Heck and for Carol uh, who, who have been lifted up in our chat. We pray that you will be with them. Loving God. Hear our prayer. We place these prayers into your hands, O oh Lord, knowing that you accomplish all things according to your goodwill. Give us faith and make us trustworthy to carry out your good work on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you always. And also with you. We'll go ahead and open our um, breakout rooms here in a moment, but in the meantime, go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.